this is FFX. Welcome back to another video. Um, today I'm gonna be talking about standard deviations, right? Standard deviation projections. And personally, I utilize this when I'm looking to have a specific draw in liquidity, right? A specific a specific target, right? If that makes sense. So, um, what is standard deviations? It's simply projections that are we personally allow price to go in case of a draw on liquidity or a target right so i'm going to utilize this london example um executed a paper trade just to demonstrate right so first thing we are lining our london range which is from 6 a.m right I mean our Asia range, which is from 6 p.m. all the way to 6 to midnight. Talking, talking, talking. But yeah, um, Asia is pretty much Q1, right? Q2, this would be uh, London, right? So we can outline this range right here as a London manipulation for potential shorts heading into New York, right? Or continuation. Right, so we can mark this out as London with a very large text. I don't know, it's not, it's not visible. Oh, okay. This right here is our London range. So when we're trading London, this is pretty much the range we look at to take entries within, right? Then now. This gray range right here is our Asia range, right? So, or we can say it's Asian Q1, Asian quarter one, right? So in simple terms, right? How far do we allow price to go lower if we're bullish and higher if we're bearish when we're doing our standard deviation projections, right? So I use the FIB right potentially from asia's high to its low which is right here right and then if i can make them a bit thicker we only allow price to go three standard deviations at max including the current price range right so our first standard deviation is this one right here you can also use like the jam box to do this, but I just want to demonstrate it like this. This is our standard deviation one. Right. Then we can even like reduce the opacity. And then this right here is standard deviation two. So in total, we have three standard deviations. Or you can say we have two standard deviations, including excluding the the asia range right so that's pretty much how we utilize our standard deviations projections when we're looking for key areas in which price could react off when we are looking to trade below price if we're bullish right and a few rules that we identify right when we are bullish generally we want to we want to execute trades below the open of the day which is midnight right here so so price open right here this is our new york new day open right meaning that if we want to take buys we want to be below the open if we want to take sales we want to be above right but now here's an additional way in which we could confirm our trades using this day ranges right we divide our London range into quarters like this right and then our true session day open would begin after the first quarter range which is pretty much this range right here right we can call this um q1 
one range and then we can place it above like this right so in simple terms our true day open is the one above and then right now we can in also include our new session session open new day session open new new day session open right so right now we below both projections meaning that we below the new day open and we are below the new day session open right and all our executions need to be within the distribution range which is q3 right we'll mark this out as Q3, we'll say it's our Q3 kill zone. Kill zone, right? Then we can make it white. Then we make the color blue. That's our trading kill zone, meaning that all executions will be taken within the third quarter range. No more, no less right if that makes sense it's always like this it never changes right just to keep things simple avoid executing within the second quarter range because that's the manipulation range you can get stopped out like crazy so the second quarter is regarded as our manipulation range q3 manipulations I explained this in the previous videos but i'm just gonna explain it again so it marinates into your head right so the rules are simple when we look into trade within this range our executions our entries will either be on the five minute time frame or the 15 minute time frame so meaning that if you're planning to go long within this range right on the 15 minute time frame this inefficiency right here would you would be your would be your busy would, it, it will be your entry for higher prices with allowance of price potentially reaching back into the one below it right you could even use this inversion for you to get the support for higher prices right but personally i like executing my trades within the five minute time frame right and how do i approach this we can pretty much reduce this like this first of all I'm waiting, I'm waiting for a breaker and that's the first thing I actually execute a trade on and like the rules for a breaker are when price closes creates a breaker within the second quarter range the manipulation range right then I wait for a bar to open above the breaker when we're heading into the third quarter range and then execute my trade if that doesn't happen um I wait for price to potentially draw back into the range or create a fair value gap and then i'm anticipating price to draw back to it within the third quadrant range of the third quarter and what do i mean by that um we divide a kill zone into quarters like this right we mark out this range right here we we can't even call this a silver bullet profile right it's not it is it's not but yeah sp it's gonna be our micro quarter silver bullet range right so the first way um i would actually execute a trade is utilizing this breaker right here we call this a breaker block right then we can project it, project it out like this and then if i'm planning to go long i wait for price to close above the high of the breaker right which in this case would be this candlestick right here right personally i wouldn't trust this one because it just managed to pretty much close within the same range as the breaker range right so i'd wait for this candlestick to close and the benefits of it is that it's within the third quarter range so as soon as price closes above with the next candlestick i'm going long right with my stop loss pretty much below right there and if I want to be more safe, right there, 
right and then my draw on liquidity would be pretty much let's remove the new day open ranges right let's also remove the manipulation ranges to keep price clean would be this price range and higher right but now how do we how do i utilize my standard deviations as a projection to see higher prices right from the breaker range all the way to the low like this i would add in a fib that connects from the most recent low before price moved higher to the breaker close and then that range right here we'll mark that out as times four because it's four times the the breaker range right you can mark that out like this that's my true drawn liquidity and why do i utilize it like this is because price is above the q1 quarter range that's the most obvious buy side that price may react off right because like right now we're heading into the fourth quarter and the fourth quarter can be a continuation or a reversal generally if price hits my target before that uh after that before we can actually reach the third quarter then i would like close my trade but if we're still moving within this range and we do not reach the buy side liquidity range above here we call it like this we'll say it's buy side liquidity then we yeah if price doesn't reach this high before by the time the the sec the third quarter ends then i'll allow myself to hold the trade but generally reaching into the the, the last quarter range of london i want to be out the trade if you're doing this in new york you'd want to be out within the last quarter range which would be pretty much i believe from um 10 30 to 12 o'clock yeah so it's pretty much universal to every individual um session right and there's two ways pretty much i would have capitalized and let's say you manage to miss your entry based on the break right you can utilize this favorite gap right here let me even remove this this favorite gap right here is your additional entry because like right now it's within the silver bullet range meaning it's within the third quarter of the third quarter range of london right that's where price tends to be highly reactive so this whole retest was pretty much a manipulation lower to pretty much drop back into this favorite gap right here right and how do i trust that this favorite gap is going to support higher prices it's because we have an inversion favorite gap within this range right here right and we utilize in this candle right here this bullish one let me just cut copy paste this this one right here as an auto block turned into a breaker right price draws back into the favorite gap range and then we expect price to react higher and you can only trust this favorite gap as soon as if it taps price within the range like this right so if you wanna my bad if you want to be more precise with it you would scale down into a lower time frame and wait for some form of displacements right which now we just pushing price <laughs> right here's what we have we have this as our one minute breaker we have this as our one minute breaker right bearing in mind we're within the third quadrant range of the third quarter range we can divide this micro range into quarters too right what do we have we have this range right here i'm gonna make this 
blue too. So meaning that we only execute trades within this range. Hope that makes sense, right? So as soon as price draws back into the favorably gap range, right? Price taps it, creates this breaker. As soon as price closes above, that's execution for higher prices. And I only use breakers, breakers as an as an entry only if they present themselves within the third quarter range within price, right? That's how you actually learn to trust the VV gaps and auto blocks because this is simply fractal and universal to everything. But also bearing in mind, you do not have to go in details with this, meaning that you don't even have to look at the one minute time frame, right? I would only utilize this if I want to be more nimble or I'm trying to flex or demonstrate an example or something, right? Because in this case, you'd have a really, really tight stop loss with still the standard deviation high right here as your drawn liquidity, right? So this is pretty much like a refined entry, if that makes sense. But also to provide validity to this trade setup, right? I managed to capitalize on this paper trading wise, right? So here's the trade executions taken. This one, this one was the first one executed, right? This one is the second one. I utilized this one as a trade entry because it managed to draw back into this five minute inversion favorability gap. As soon as it started reacting higher, I executed a trade. Went back into the range, drew back into the five minute favorability gap, right? Let's outline that like this. Five minute, BZ. Um, BZ, by side imbalance, sell side inefficient, favorability gap. A BZ is a bullish favorability gap. A CB is a bearish one, right? So, price moves higher. Sorry, this mic is bugging. So, price moves moves higher, right? As soon as this candlestick closed above, that's, that was my execution with my stop below price and my target being right there. Managed to close it a bit earlier. Because it managed to reach by side. But hopefully the logic. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully um the logic is making sense. And hopefully everybody found this insightful, helpful. And if you liked what was provided, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Like button. You can hit me up on Twitter if you need assistance on anything. I'm always down to have like sessions or discussions with individuals that are into the markets like I am. But yeah, hope everybody stays safe. And yeah, man.